Hello and welcome to this clip going through question 2 from the 2007 uh, Chemistry Olympiad paper round 1. It's not a Royal Society of Chemistry mark scheme and I'd like to point out that it's my thoughts only. Okay, so it t it's obviously talking about phosphorus and it says it's talking about geometric shapes in chemistry. Now geometric shapes in chemistry is not something that's covered at A level but it's easily um, thought through because the geometry that we're talking about is not actually that hard. But it is covered in depth at university chemistry level. So we're talking about phosphorus and the fact that it exists is a number of allotropes. So an allotrope essentially means a different version of the same isotope of an element. So for carbon we've got diamond versus graphite. And for the element oxygen we've got O2 or we've got ozone which is O3. So that sort of sets the scene as to what an allotrope actually is. So then it says that uh, solid white phosphorus contains P4 molecules with each P atom at the vertex of a regular tetrahedron. So just to illustrate what a vertex is, I've highlighted the vertices, which is plural, on the cube octahedron that's uh, given as an example there. So it's essentially like the corners of an, a geometric shape. So if we take a regular tetrahedron, what we can do is place a P atom at the vertex of each, uh, or each vertex. So you can see that there's actually four phosphorus atoms. So we can draw it out like that, with uh, the black line representing the chemical bonds and the phosphorus atoms sitting at the vertices of our regular tetrahedron. So now we have to count how many edges are there. So it's quite easy here just to label it up and you can see that there are six. So now it starts talking about the chemistry of phosphorus, saying it spontaneously ignites in air to form a mixture of phosphorus 3 oxide and phosphorus 5 oxide. So we can work out that phosphorus 3 oxide is P2O3 using oxidation numbers. So oxygen is always minus 2. So 3 times minus 2 is minus 6. Therefore, phosphorus has to add up to plus 6. And because phosphorus is in oxidation state 3, as the Roman numeral suggests, you'd have to do it as P2O3. So we now have to balance it out. So obviously P2O3 comes from P4, so you need two lots of P2O3. Now you need to balance the oxygen, so two lots of O3 means three lots of O2. But it also asks us to do phosphorus 5 oxide. So this means that phosphorus must be plus 5 and oxygen remains as minus 2. So what you've got to do is use the lowest common multiple, which happens to be 10. So the way you get around this is you have two phosphoruses and five oxygens. So that means we're producing P2O5. So coming from P4 and O2, that must mean we have two P2O5s and five O2s. So at this point I'm going to move the page down a bit because we're getting out of room. So as I'm doing that you can see that the structure of each oxide is also based on a regular tetrahedron. Now a really important bit of information here. So it says the phosphorus atoms remain at the vertices of a tetrahedron and are no longer bonded to each other. So let's draw that out to see if we can visualise that. So what you have to do is imagine them in a tetrahedral shape but break the bonds in your mind. So then it says the P atoms are joined by bridging oxygens. So just to remind ourselves of the old P4 bonds, I've represented them by dotted lines. Now it tells us that those bonds no longer exist, so I'm going to get rid of them in a second and I'm going to have to put in bridging oxygens instead. So I need to point out that this isn't the precise shape, but if we take the idea of bridging oxygens, we do actually have P4 O6. So now it asks us to do something similar with phosphorus 5 oxide. So we're still making sure we have that shape. 
but we now need four extra oxygens. So if we go back to our P4O6, the only way we can actually add on four more oxygens is to bond an extra oxygen onto each phosphorus. So then phosphorus has five bonds. So which comes back to the definition of oxidation number, the number of electrons involved in bonds. So if we have five bonds, we have five electrons involved in bonds. So it's still not quite the precise shape, but I have added the, elect sorry, the, the oxygens double bonded to the phosphorus. So now each phosphorus has five bonds. And we have ten oxygens. So if I tick those two facts off on the right-hand side of the screen, we've now fulfilled the criteria. So then it says, each oxide reacts with water to form an acid. Phosphorus 5-oxide, for example, forms phosphoric 5-acid, which is H3PO4, which does actually come up in A-level chemistry. It's a, a dehydrating agent. Uh, so draw the molecular structure, it says, of phosphoric 5-acid and showing all of the bonds. So we can start with the p-double bond oxygen because we've seen from the previous question that this actually happens. So now we've got PO4, we now need to add the hydrogens in because it needs to behave as an acid. So I've put the hydrogen in in black, but it does say to show all the bonds. So you'd end up with something like that. So then it says write the equation for the reaction forming phosphoric acid. So our product is H3PO4. Going back to the question, it tells us phosphorus 5 oxide forms phosphoric 5 acid. So we know that we've got P4O10 reacting with H2O to make H3PO4. Now all we have to do is balance it. So we can start by balancing for P4 by doing four phosphoric acids. And we can balance for 12 hydrogens on the right hand side by doing 6H2O. And now we can see that it's balanced for oxygen. So again we need to move the page down slightly because clearly we're running out of space. So finally, a quantitative method for determining phosphate levels in aqueous solution involves adding ammonium molybdate. So, um, we need to go back to the top of the page because it says it forms a cuboctahedron. So let's go back to the top of the page. Look at our cuboctahedron. So I'll be sort of flicking back and forth between the top of the page and the bottom of the page. So what I might actually do at this point is, uh, is reduce the size of the page on the screen so we can work on it from the right hand side. So we're now going to calculate the oxidation state of molybdenum in ammonium molybdate. So starting off with the oxygen, we have four lots of minus two, so that means a total of minus eight contributed to the overall um, oxidation state of the species. And we know that the NH4 plus ion has uh, an oxidation state of plus one overall, or charge of plus one overall, so therefore two of them make plus two, which means molybdenum must be plus six. So going on to part I now, it says how many vertices and edges are there in a cube octahedron? So, copying out the cube octahedron as best I can, please forgive my lack of artistic talent, but we'll see how we can do. Let's do the vertices in blue. You can check my counting if you wish, but I make it at about 12. So now we can do the edges. So we've got 19 so far, but I haven't counted the rear-facing triangle, which I've now highlighted in green. And there's also two more edges. So that gives us 24 edges. So moving on to J. It says calculate the number of molybdenum atoms and the number of oxygen atoms in the molybdophosphate 
I am. So to deal with the molybdenum atoms, first of all, it says that uh, a molybdenum atom lies at each vertex of the cube octahedron. So that means you've got 12 molybdenum atoms in total. So we have 24 edges, and it says that each edge of the cube octahedron is bridged by an oxygen atom. So because a further oxygen atom is joined to every vertex, you add 12 to that, which gives you 36. And then finally, it says a single phosphate unit lies at the centre of the structure with each of its four oxygen atoms, so four more oxygen atoms, coordinating to three molybdenum atoms. So if we take 24, 12 and 4, that gives us 40 oxygen atoms. So then finally it says, given that no atom changes its oxidation state during the formation of ammonium molybdophosphate, calculate the overall charge of the molybdophosphate ion, and hence the formula of ammonium molybdophosphate. So what I'm going to do here is park the two answers from part J, 12 molybdenum atoms and 40 oxygen atoms next to where J is printed, and clear a bit of space in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. So if we start with our 12 molybdenum atoms, that's 12 lots of plus 6, that means plus 72. So if we take 40 oxygen into account, that's 40 times minus 2, that gives us minus 80. Now if we take the phosphate, uh, that has uh, three minuses, a phosphate in the centre of the structure, single phosphate unit, that's minus 3. So at this present time, we have minus 11. But it says that each oxygen in um, PO4 coordinates to three molybdenum atoms. Now the word coordinate is another word for a dative covalent bond. So what this means is the charge or the oxidation state of the oxygens um, isn't actually taken into account anymore because they're uh, coordinate bonding, they're dative covalent bonding. So what that means is the PO43- minus is not a separate ion anymore. So the four oxygens previously in PO43- minus now in dative covalent bonds instead. So what that means is that we can ignore the PO43-. minus. So this means that the P is still plus 5. The oxygens are now part of the 40 oxygens that we've just listed. So that means our total now changes to minus 3. So if we have a minus 3 charge, to balance it, we need four, sorry, three ammonias, uh, ammonium, three ammonium ions, 12 molybdenums, 40 oxygens, and one phosphorus. So that would be NH43, ML12, O40, P is our final answer. Okay, so hopefully you found this a useful clip to take you through this question, and until next time, thanks for listening, and see you soon.